Hello, welcome to another Tilt Conversations. Um, today I'm with Catherine Susie, yes. who uh, is our latest artist in residence as part of the Tilt program, Tilt Curiosity Labs. So my first question for you, Catherine. Yes. Why are you doing an art residency in an architecture firm? Well, um, my background being in fashion, textiles, and visual art, mm -hmm. um, a lot of my, the work that I started seeking to do at, at the infancy of my career was always architecturally related. And I think because in my design training, I always had an affinity to structure in ways, and, and even in the history of textiles and clothing, when um, certain garments were starting to be formed, when tailoring was uh, developed, it was often mimicking the architecture that was being designed at the time. So if you go as far back as Gothic architecture, the hats, the headdresses that women wore, mm -hmm were very conical shaped, and that was in direct response to uh, the architecture that was being built at the time, because everything was religious related, all their clothing. Right. That carried on through into the Renaissance period, so on and so forth. So there's been this long relationship between fashion, textiles, and architecture, and, there, and that's something that I've constantly been investigating as I've gone through and designed my own textiles as a result of things that I still do mm. in the field of fashion design, but I've kind of pushed it a little bit further, and, and I've, I should say I've been focusing on this particular uh, material process where I acquire textile industry waste, specifically waste hosiery, and I go, I go through the process of transforming it into new textiles and clothing collections, but through that process, there's, there's always uh, waste. Right. That's always, that always happens, and so I've been, over the years, exploring what can I do with this outside of the world of fashion that relates to all these relationships that we have with textiles. So, your, so a lot of your work seems to have started to skew towards sort of sculptural form, sort of three-dimensional materiality and, and what have you. Yes. And, and this, this in front of us right now is what? Explain what's happening here. Well, um... It's beautiful, by the way. Well, thank you. Um, well, this has been a, a result of a mass amount of trial and error. Mm. Um, and I mean, I have to stress that when you work in, in textiles, you know, it can take months of research and development to get a certain textile application down depending on what the use is going to be. And, and in this use, case, what will happen with this? Well, this in particular, what's happening, what I'm going to be creating as a result of the residency, not only have I developed a new way of um, engineering yarn out of the waste material, which is, this is specifically the waistbands that are uh, collected uh, off of hosiery um, through my textile transformation process. I do use it for a variety of things, but in this case, it has a structure. Yeah, it's very which, stiff, isn't it? It's yes. got a, like a wall. It feels almost like board. Well, the intention was I wanted to create a three-dimensional knitted structure mm -hmm. that can stand on its own out mm. of this material because it has the ability to, f to create a formation that textiles isn't often, especially this material, is related to. This is all waste? This is all waste. From what? It, where? Um, uh, it's a combination of coming from two mills, one from Montreal. But what kind of fabric is this? It's, it's, this is... it's, it's nylon. It's pantyhose. This is pantyhose. Women's you're making, well, you're making a, a sculptural piece. Out of pantyhose. Out of pantyhose. Yes. I'm not, sure I've, seen, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I've seen pantyhose th th these colors before. It's because I dye them. You, so you have... T you have Okay, hold on. So you're saying you have taken all of this waste from pantyhose, from dyed them various colors, yeah. cut them all down, sewn them together, and made thick yarn to make this. Well, this is, this is well, yes and no. So when I uh, buy, the, so I buy the waste, yep. buy the pound, uh, I never know what I'm going to get. And these mills are what they call private label manufacturers. So okay. they, they design for like Calvin Klein, DKNY, Victoria's Secret, Nordstrom, etc. And so it comes to me like this, in this way. Right. Okay, and, and so it comes to me fully constructed as women's panio, sometimes they're just the tubes, the legs themselves, what have you. And so uh, from there, I will dye it. I use a sustainable, um, non-toxic dye process. It's a hot water dye process. And, um, that essentially just you just add water. No water is being dumped into the environment, right. and, and all the dye is absorbed in the process. And um, from there, I print it because I use that. I, I go through the process of 
transforming all the materials into yardage that I use for my clothing collection. Oh, I see. And so, uh, as a result of making the fabric for my garment collections, I produce two kinds of waste in the process. These tiny little strips mm -hmm. that I make another kind of yarn with mm -hmm. that I actually sell, and uh, as well as uh, yes. all the waste bags. Yeah, so this is a cumulative waste that I keep. I do not throw anything out. Even the process of my printing process, all of the cumulative uh, textile ink that captures on my um, printing table covers, mm -hmm. I exhibit them as artifacts as well as part of the process, part of the conversation of how uh, how does waste uh, generate new uh, ideas for creativity and application and design? So in a so, way, in a way, as an artist, you're you're really the best kind of sustainability. Like this is really this is sustainable art. Yeah. Like this is entirely uh, recycled materials mm -hmm. that we're working with here. And it's it's important because in yes, I do not want to be working with a petroleum based byproduct. Right. And that's also why I started working with this material back in 2002 with, while I was a textile student, looking at, okay, these materials exist. Right. You know, they're not really going anywhere. No, and I've the had landfill. this, exactly, and this does not decompose. Right. I have produced work, there's ways of recycling with it now on a, on a much larger scale, but nylon was the last out of all the synthetic materials yeah. to be recycled. It's very hard. Yeah. So, um, so, there's so you're way, making beauty from it. Absolutely. So I have an, so let's 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 wrap up our conversation with another another topic. Sure. It kind of relating back to the why are you in an architecture firm? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the this this tilt curiosity labs that this artist in residency is a part of is an unusual sort of affair yes. in this industry. Yeah. Occasionally, I am asked how these experimentations, these collaborations, these forays inform our process or, or improve our, our ability as designers. Tell me a little bit about how you see this affecting our team and, and, and our insights and our, uh, like this is a very, we did, you, you did a workshop yes, with I all did. of our staff. Yeah, did. Tell, yeah, tell yeah. me about that and, and what you think the implications are. Well, it was interesting. So as part of the residency, yes, invited to give a workshop based on. Which was very popular. Yes. Everybody showed up. <laughs> it was great. Um, what, and it was, it was good because, um, a huge part for the of record, that was the first time I've ever knitted in my life. Oh, well, that's fantastic. And now you know a little bit I, about I what's that, gone into yeah, all this. Yeah, that's a lot of so, work. And, and, I think, and the thing that was interesting with that particular workshop, and as you know, there's been different types of trial and error that I've gone through. You know, I started off with one uh, kind of, two different types of machinery, knitting machinery, circular knitting machinery, mm -hmm. and with different kind of waste yarn that I produce, and then it's evolved into this, you know, and and... And the point of that workshop, I think the thing that was amazing, it really showed, you know, the failure yeah. that kind of happens with tools, yeah. and the process of trial and error I've had to go through as a result to come up with something. I remember seeing that, you unknitting a bunch of stuff and doing it over and that's a, just, that's a few part times, of, right? That's part of the process. Hours to be of work to just kind of unravel it to get exactly what you need to get because you need to be able to get uh, all of those things worked out before you start putting things in the full production. Right. And so. Um, that conversation, I think, was very necessary. So there's an understanding of my creative process and development, development. But at the same time, I think a lot of that um, speaks to a lot of the creative process and trial and error that goes on when you're trying to create something for, you know, architecturally. Did, did your did your process become informed in any way by being inside our studio space? Oh, absolutely. I think there's a couple things that went on in the last, you know, a couple months since I've been here. Um, one being, I think I had this one moment. So as you know, I, I, I did a trip to Western Australia, and I visited the, this place in the desert called the Pinnacles, and it's this petrified forest, it's pretty mag magnificent. Um, I came back from that trip completely inspired by these formations that are, you know, a couple million years old in the middle of the desert, and then I see these drawings inside here that a remnant of the shards that I saw in the desert. And so that has come to inform aspects of how I'm going to be installing and how this work is coming together. So there has been some creative sort of Amazing. conversation that's gone. So I've observed certain things and there's a lot of, uh, I've seen in the creative process that really relates to how I approach and how I work in right. general. And so um, actually I have this one really good quote um, that I'm just gonna pull up because right now, if I say it verbatim, it's not gonna come out the same way. But this is actually, um, from a designer named Gianfranco Fer, he's passed away now. Mm -hmm. Originally trained as an architect, 
He became a, a fashion designer in the 1970s. Oh, wow. Um, the design of a dress, furniture, a house, a room, a street, and a city are all the same process. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So, when is this going to be revealed? March 3rd. March 3rd. 2017. And, and then at some point the public can can see this. It will be, and what will it look like? What could we, what can we envision when this gets installed? In, in your mind, what is, what is that? Well, what I'll, tell, what I'll tell you, it'll be a, uh, a seven foot high, four and a half wide structure wow. that people will be able to interact with. And enter? And enter. That's amazing. So it's been really fun talking to you and having you here as part of our team. Um, yes, thank I can't you. wait to see where this goes and to watch your amazing career uh, continue. So thank you so much for everything. And thank you. It's been amazing. This is to be continued. To be continued. Yeah. So Perfect. speaking of which, <laughs> we'll see you guys next time uh, for a Tilt Conversation and maybe we'll have another beautiful piece of art to talk about. Bye for now.